Hi everyone, today I want to talk about Born by Jeff Vandermeer. Jeff Vandermeer is the author of the Southern Reach trilogy, which admittedly I have yet to read. This is his most recently released novel. Actually, when I was at the bookstore, I had intended on buying the first book in the Southern Reach trilogy, Annihilation, but they didn't have it, so I bought this instead. I also was really intrigued because I hadn't really heard anything about this. I was aware of the general premise, but I didn't really have any preconceptions when going into this, which is kind of nice sometimes. Um, I do generally like to know the people that share my taste also enjoyed a book that I maybe want to read, but sometimes it's nice to just kind of go into something and have no clue what you're going into, and that is definitely what it was like to read Born. I also think I benefited from knowing very little about the plot, so I'm only going to talk about the basic premise and more generally the themes and ideas that this book sparked in me, because I don't want to give away what was really delightful about this reading experience, which were a lot of the twists and turns and surprises that I was not expecting because again, I just didn't really know what I was getting myself into. And the, the premise is kind of strange, so stay with me, but this book takes place in the future, on Earth, in a world that has been completely destroyed ecologically. It is not clear what exactly happened, but it seems like as a result of humans being environmentally irresponsible, the world has been kind of destroyed. We focus on a woman named Rachel living in an unnamed city. She lives in a city, next to a river that is completely polluted. It's technicolor because of how many pollutants are in the water. People are, just, are scavengers and will do basically anything to survive. Rachel lives in a hideout with her partner Wick, and they are both a romantic partnership but also a collaborative partnership in their own survival. The, the city is controlled by two opposing forces. One, a mysterious woman named the Magician, and one is a giant bear named Mord. Yes, I said a giant bear. He is many stories tall, I think two or three stories tall when he's laying down, and he can fly. And he is so large that he just happens to collect stuff in his fur, whether it be garbage or things that are more helpful. So people will literally climb him and scavenge things out of his fur. And Rachel does this as one of her means of collecting supplies for survival. And she one day climbs into his fur and discovers this creature that kind of looks maybe like a sea anemone. She's not really sure if it's a plant or just some kind of like weird blob thing, but she is attached to it for some reason and decides to take it home and name it Born. Now that's pretty much all I want to say about this story because that is essentially as much as I knew going in and I, like I said, was delighted by all the surprises along the way. I had no idea where the story wanted to go and it was fun to go along the ride. I've seen and read other reviews that give away much more to the story in terms of the plot about what Born may be and what it does, but I don't really want to go into that because I think that is part of the fun. You're really seeing things through Rachel's eyes. It's a first person perspective. And so you're limited to what she knows and understands and what she decides to tell you. And she doesn't know what porn is when she picks it up. She just kind of likes it, thinks it's kind of cool. And that should be enough to also draw in you as a reader. And if it doesn't, then maybe this is not the book for you. I'm more interested in talking about what this book made me think and how it made me feel. One of the most remarkable things about this book is the world building. I really enjoyed the first 50 pages or so where we got introduced to the world and we get a sense of Rachel and Wick and their relationship but also the city in which they live and how it's been ravaged by consequences of human ignorance and uh, ego and how these people who are now adults are having to deal with consequences that generations previous just didn't care about. They, um, they were not concerned for passing the planet on in a stable and thriving condition to generations ahead of them. and. I mean, this is a thing that we're dealing with right now, is how much or how little people actually give a shit about future generations and the survival of the planet and the importance of protecting our environment. And this book is pretty head-on talking about the consequences of our behaviors now um, and how people can be manipulated when they are in times of need by even by things that we bioengineer to replace things that occur naturally. I very quickly cared for Wick and Rachel and their relationship, but I think the problem that I had is that this book has a major plateauing problem. It was excellent at the beginning and seemed to kind of drag near the middle. And I don't really know what would have improved this book, perhaps editing or perhaps changing the plot a little bit, but this book didn't really go where I had thought it would based on the elements that it had introduced, and to me it kind of seemed to drag when it failed to go in directions that I thought would maybe be more interesting. It does pick back up toward the end, but I feel like also at the book's disadvantage because it picks up so quickly and so close to the end that the journey to the final pages 
is just all far too rapid and so many different things happen all at once that it's really I really struggled as an observer and and a reader to care for all the things that were happening and I didn't really feel like I had time to emotionally respond to every every single thing that happened at the end because they pack in a lot close to the end. I really wish the middle 150 pages had been shortened or changed to give the end more breathing room because I think it really needed it and that is where the book suffered the most for me. I was not emotionally committed in the same way to the story anymore because things happened so fast when the lead up had been so slow. And I, I think it's a failure of Jeff Vandermeer in his writing to have created characters that I did really care for and relationships that I did really care about at the beginning, but the follow through just wasn't there. I gave it either three and a half or four stars because I really enjoyed the premise. I thought it was so clever and creative. And the larger ideas that Jeff Vandermeer explores, I think the big one being what is life and and how do we define personhood in like the biggest terms possible. And that's all I really want to say. And I really love books that explore what it means to be human, how we define our own humanity, and what it means when we impress those definitions on other things that don't maybe conform to those ideas. Other books I really enjoyed that explore these ideas are like The Books of Strange New Things by Michelle Faber, or The Cage of Zeus by Sayuri Ueda, and Speak by Louisa Hall. It's a motif in books that I tend to really gravitate toward and latch onto. So would I recommend this? I think I would. Like I said, I don't really have a point of comparison because I've yet to read the Southern Reach trilogy, so I can't say whether or not this is better or more accomplished than that series, although I still am intrigued to read it. I do think that this could be science fiction for people who are not super into science fiction because it doesn't really bother to try and go into the science too much. Um, you can't really think too hard about the fact that there's this giant flying bear roaming around the city, or how things are bioengineered by the magician and help her control the city, or things that Wick creates because he is also a bioengineer. You just can't think about these things too hard because they don't really make a lot of sense. You just have to kind of buy into the premise and go with it. And the premise is strange, I'll give you that. So if it's too much, then I completely understand. But if you're willing to buy into the premise and you are looking for a weird but a very unconventional dystopian novel that, that I would say is still very plot driven but also is much more character focused than a lot of dystopian novels, this may be for you. This is extremely focused on just a couple of characters and you can get a really deep dive into who they are, filtered of course through our protagonist Rachel's perspective. I do really wish that I'd gotten a little bit more background on what was going on with the world and the rules of the city that they're living in because I feel like Vandermeer really, really missed out with the magician character and it could have done some really awesome things with her and it just didn't go where I thought it would and I, I guess I enjoy being surprised and not being able to predict plots very much, but I feel like she was totally an afterthought and probably could have been removed from the story with little consequence, which is really a bummer because I think that she could have been a powerhouse in the story that did really cool things. To me, she was in terms of as a character she was about as developed as the giant flying bear who can't talk and doesn't have a personality. So that to me was a little disappointing but I still think the ideas he's exploring and the premise behind is this world and the relationships that he builds and fosters between Rachel and Wick but also Rachel and Bourne but it just didn't go far enough for me. I wanted it to focus on different things. I wanted it to put more emphasis on things that I was interested in than were actually focused on in the book, which is totally a personal preference thing. For me, it just didn't go where I wanted it to go. Those are my thoughts on Born. If you've read this, I would love to have a discussion about it because it is a super weird book. So if you have read it, I would love to hear your thoughts. And other than that, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.